Before today's video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest videos. If you want to see a case or topic covered by Paranormally Listed, then go to criminallylisted.com and fill out the questionnaire under the Suggest a Case tab. Number 3. Black Hole Swarm A couple of years ago, there was a rumor going around that the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland was going to cause the end of the world. According to the theories, that particle accelerator was going to somehow misfire and create a black hole on Earth, one that would consume the planet and everything living on it, including us. According to noted physicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, it would have been a horrific death. As your body is sucked into the black hole, feet first, the gravitational effect would stretch you out on a molecular level. Looking down at your feet, you notice your toes would elongate as they were sucked into the void. Your body would continue to stretch like a rubber band as your head neared the center of the black hole. Eventually, your body would thin out until the molecular bonds broke. So while you're getting ripped apart head to toe, Tyson explained, you will also extrude through the fabric of space and time like toothpaste squeezed through a tube. Tyson calls this gruesome way to die spaghettification. But ever since CERN went online, scientists have desperately tried to calm everyone down, patiently explaining how this apocalypse scenario could not, in fact, ever happen at CERN or anywhere else. There never really was a danger from the accelerator, said particle physicist Robert Johnson at the time of CERN's launch in 2008, but that sure didn't stop people when speculating there might be. So, for the last time, the Large Hydron Collider will not cause the end of the world. But, it could still create a black hole. According to CERN's own website, the LHAC does have the ability to create microscopic black holes. Though these typically disintegrate faster than is humanly possible to see. So there's no danger to Earth from one little black hole. But what about thousands, maybe millions, of microscopic black holes descending on Earth like some kind of infestation? Okay, now we're talking. The black hole swarm theory originated around 2011 when scientists speculated that microscopic black holes might behave very differently than huge ones found in deep space. These atom-sized holes would not necessarily have the gravitational have to suck in everything in their path, but they would still be heavier than their size suggests, much heavier. For instance, it's estimated that a black hole, even the size of half a golf ball, would be the same weight as the planet Earth. So even a teeny tiny black hole, even one of them the size of the atom, would still weigh as much as a huge asteroid. Scientists then began speculating that the craters on the moon were, in part, the result of a black hole bombardment billions of years ago. Which posed the question, if a swarm of black holes battered the moon, couldn't they also one day batter the earth as well? Imagine a rain of black holes descending on the earth, either bombing us into nothing or turning us into spaghetti. Number 2. Thorny-Headed Worms Do you find yourself grumpy or a little low some days? You may be experiencing the effects of low serotonin, a complex neuroreceptor living mainly in our guts, responsible for a whole host of bodily processes. To be fair, however, serotonin is so complex that scientists are still trying to figure out exactly what it does and how it works. Aside from mood, they believe it also regulates things like digestion, healing, and even libido. But what some scientists have come to learn is that serotonin is also delicious, leads to a species of parasite called the thorny-headed worm. These little critters gorge on the stuff like a gambler's kid at an all-day Vegas buffet. One species of the worm preys on a shrimp-like vertebrae called a gammarid. 
the worm pours into the shrimp, then attacks its guts, causing it to overproduce serotonin. This serotonin overload has two effects, neither of them good for the shrimp. First, the parasite feeds on the extra serotonin. But second, the overload of serotonin causes the shrimp to feel pretty good. It makes him unafraid of predators like birds who lurk just above the waterline waiting to eat him. Without that fear, the shrimp mindlessly swims up to the water surface when it perceives danger, instead of swimming down to the mud under the water where it usually buries itself to hide. Not only that, but this shrimp seeks out something to cling to, making it easier for the bird to spot. When the bird eventually eats the shrimp, the parasite happily goes along for the ride, ending up in the bird's body, which was its goal the entire time. Clever little worm. Still, this particular species of thorny-headed worm is only one of some 1,400 species of the worm around the world. Acathosathlins have been found in fish, crustaceans, birds, and mammals. And though rare, they have been known to affect humans. There were four such reported infections in Europe during the late 19th century, with a widespread outbreak occurring in Russia in 1865. These human parasitic infections are thought to be introduced to us via contaminated meats and water or unwashed vegetables. Once ingested, the worm uses its mouth pinchers to attach the lining of the stomach where it feeds on whatever we feed on, with some feeding on the precious serotonin. With the worm eating all the serotonin we produce, there can be enough left of the stuff in our bodies to regulate our own mood. With no serotonin and no way to keep up production of it, humans are at risk of becoming emotionally unstable. On one hand, moody and confused, and on the other, sleepy and lethargic. The kind of lethargy that no amount of caffeine would be able to cure. Imagine if everyone on Earth started having a lazy day all at once. People would stop showing up for work. Store shelves would be bare. The world as we know it would grind to a halt. And infected people would simply die from apathy and malnutrition as the parasites in their guts took over their bodies, creating a very real and utterly terrifying zombie apocalypse. Number 1. Coronal Mass Ejection According to an ancient mind prophecy, the world as we know it was supposed to end in 2012. Obviously, that didn't happen, but perhaps we came closer to calamity than most realize. In July 2012, astronomers recorded an unprecedented coronal mass ejection from the Sun. This CME, a plasma blob containing 80 billion pounds of electrically charged particles from the Sun's upper atmosphere, plumbed towards Earth at a dizzying speed. Thankfully, the Earth missed a direct hit from this ejection, but only by about a week. Had the event occurred six days earlier, we would have taken the full brunt of the solar storm. The thing is, however, these type of solar flares happen way more often than they are reported. In 2012 alone, there were more than 20 of varying speeds and sizes recorded. But if you're low on sunscreen, you need worry. CMEs, by and large, are harmless to humans. The Earth's magnetosphere and atmosphere offer ample protection for our fragile bodies. What CMEs do play havoc with, however, is anything electronic. The electromagnetic radiation emitted by these CMEs have the potential to knock out everything on Earth that uses a wire, battery, or circuit board. In other words, most things we use in our daily lives. But this threat isn't theoretical. It already happened. On September 1st, 1859, British astronomer Richard Carrington was tracking abnormal activity from the sun when he observed a massive solar flare, which he recorded in his logs. Less than a day later, telegraph operators around the world 
reported getting shocked by their devices when trying to tap out messages. Wired units started to spark and catch fire, where some began to operate on their own, powered only by the charge built up inside them from the electromagneticism newly arrived from the sun. This particular CME ended up knocking out telegraph communication for a short time all around the globe. And the electrically charged particles in the Earth's atmosphere ended up creating a glowing pink aurora in the skies over Florida and Cuba, as reported in the New York Times. Given the logs Carrington kept about this solar anomaly, scientists later dubbed it the Carrington Event. And they estimated that the sun coughed up the CME at a speed approaching 3,000 kilometers a second which means the effects of the flare took a mere 17 and a half hours to reach Earth. That's not a lot of time to prepare. Just ask power station operators in Sweden and South Africa. In 2003, another CME affected electrical power generation in those two countries and sent nearly 50 orbiting satellites into a state of shutdown. Today, scientists are working on a way to predict CMEs to a greater degree and hopefully prepare satellites by remotely powering them down during the storm. But it is possible that a CME, even twice as large as the one that created the Carrington event or even multiple solar storms occurring all at once, could knock out our precious technology for an extended time, even frying it for good. And there's not much we can do about it. Look around your house to see how many things you rely on that have to be plugged in. Now imagine none of those things would ever work again. Even if the circuit boards don't overload, there would still be no electricity by which to power it. With no power, there would be no light, no fresh running water, no communications. In essence, we'd be sent back to the Stone Age. So for those who desire to unplug from the world, and go off the grid for a while, you may someday end up getting your wish. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you found it interesting. If you did find it interesting, please make sure you subscribe. We'll have a new video about the paranormal every week. If you just discovered this channel, please make sure you check out our other channel, Criminally Listed. We have over 325 videos featuring bizarre but true crime stories. You can find it at youtube.com slash criminally listed. We also have a podcast about cold cases that were eventually solved called Criminally Listed Presents Into the Killing. You can find it on Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you find great podcasts. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.